so every, hello everybody. I will uh, present you the result of transrectal height intensity focused ultrasound for the management of rectosigmoid endometriosis. It was a phase one clinical trial. Endometriosis is a benign disease uh, responsible of pelvic pain and uh, infertility. Digestive endometriosis affects nearly 2% of women world, well, worldwide in reproductive age. It's one of the most symptomatic forms of the disease, and hormonal treatment is usually not efficient. In France, nearly half of the patients will have segmental resection, and the other half will have conservative treatment like disc excision or shaving. In this study, we evaluate the feasibility to perform a shaving of the rectal wall using high view. The goal of this pilot study was the feasibility. The main objective was to visualize the endometriotic nodule using the focal one probe. The secondary objectives were to perform a high few thermal lesions to assess symptoms and quality of life, as well as morphological changes of the nodule by imaging. We also observed advanced events. We included patients older than 25 years old, no pregnancy planned in the next six months, single rectal or sigmoid lesions, no adjuvant treatment, and normal rectal anatomy. Patients were under uh, local regional anesthesia. In patients are in prone positions. The probe is slowly introduced into the rectum after bowel preparation. The balloon is filled with degassed wa sterile water through an infusion set, which will maintain contact with the rectal wall, allow ultrasound propagations, and cool the rectal wall. Real-time guided, guided ultrasonography is used to determine location of the target area. Upper, lower, as well as deeper and superficial limits are delimited and the volume of treatment is calculated. The nodule is then divided in several layers. Uh, like, as you can see here, it's one layer of treatment. And in each layer, the device will determine the number of shots. The clinicians will determine on this, uh, on this uh, layer the limit of treatment, and the device calculate the, the number of shots requiring to treat the, these lesions. Here is a copy of the treatment. And when the, when the lesion is uh, done, the green point becomes red. On the targeted point, the rise in temperature observed is between 85 and 95 degrees, the result, uh, and results in a thermal tissue coagulation and necrosis. A reproducible but small volume of ablation is created for each pulse of energy during the high hue treatment. 23 patients were included. The nodule location were the mid rectum for eight patients, height rectum for 12, and sigmoid location for three patients. The median duration of the procedure was 55 minutes. Duration of treatment between two and six minutes, and all patients leave hospital the day after the procedure. Post-operative complications, what is important is that we did not observe any rectovaginal fistula. The only complication observed was the grade one from the Clavian classifications. And as you can see, we observe uh, only constipation, anal pain, rectal bleeding, abdominal distension, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. No gynecologic severe complications. The only type two complication was cerebrospinal fluid leakage. We observe uh, significant improvements at one, three, and six months of dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, diarrhea, constipation, false urge to defecate, tenesmus, dyskesia, posterior pelvic pain, and asthenia. No adverse urinary effects were, were, were observed after the high fuel treatment. We also observe uh, an imp significant improvements at one, three, and six months of the quality of life using the 
SF36 score. What is important to note that patients uh, recover uh, social functioning, as you can see in the lower part of the graph, which is really important in these young patients. They also uh, recover uh, sexual desire after uh, three and six months. And we also observe uh, with the K score a significant improvement of abdominal pain at one, three, and six months, bloating at three and six months, and incomplete sens sensation of incomplete evacuations at six months. No significant morphological changes of the lesions were observed at three and six months uh, for patients. Only on three patients at six months, we observe a, a significant uh, uh, reduction of the nodules. In discussion, what is really interesting is to compare postoperative co complication uh, between IFU treatment and uh, surgery. As you can see after surgery, and as I said at the beginning, it's probably one of the, of the most difficult uh, type of surgery uh, because it's a functional disease, a benign disease, and the surgery is really difficult. And nearly 15% of patients will have tip three, uh, post, uh, tip three classification postoperative complications, including uh, rectovaginal fistula, pelvic abscess recurring uh, laparoscopic and or antibiotics, and transitory bladder hatony recurring three weeks to six months uh, also catheterization. This type of complication were not observed after acute treatment. We did not observe significant morphological changes after treatment. That can be explained by the reproductibility of measurements between MRIs and ultrasound. It can also be explained that in the, for the first nine patients, the imaging was performed at three months, and it's probably too early to observe a significant uh, reduction of the nodule. If you compare what was uh, demonstrated after uh, treatment uh, with, of prostatic cancer by IHU. We also perform a partial treatment in three patients, uh, uh, and in three patients, only 50% of the nodule were treated. It was sigmoid locations. It can also be explained by an insufficient intensity of treatment. We have uh, performed uh, last year with Professor Cyril Lafont, you can see uh, with one of our residents in the lower part of the slide, performed a study and he assessed uh, the attenuations of endometriotic nodules, uh, the attenuation of ultrasound by the endometriotic nodules. And he demonstrated that we, we, will, if we will be able, it will be able, we will be able to, in, to increase the intensity for the next study. So in conclusion, feasibility of targeting 100%, feasibility of treatment 87%. We also demonstrated a significant improvement of digestive and gynecological symptoms and quality of life. Adverse effects are less frequent than the surgery, no rectovaginal fistula, no dysuria. A tendency to decrease of the lesion was also observed. We have currently started a new study, which will include 38 patients, nodules limited to the rectum, uh, under the 15 first centimeters of the, of, the, uh, of the canal anal and the rectum, and the intensity of ultrasound were, uh, are increased. The results will be uh, for the next uh, first sample. So thank you for your attention. I, will, uh, I would like to thank all my team in CERM and IDAP TMS for the uh, support. Thank you, and I can uh, answer to your, question, your questions.